Sup fools, how's it going? Today we're gonna talk about how you can stop being a struggling artist. Let's begin. artist is someone who does a certain art, wants a good for a living, but he can't for some reason, so he has to do certain side hustles just to survive. I used to be one, and I know many people who are still one, and that's why I'm making this video right now, so maybe I can help you to do what you love for a living. So really, I can break it down to four things you have to do so you can pay your bills with your art and not with side hustles. But it really depends on the art you do because I'm a cinematographer and filmmaker so most of my examples are related to that but I try to keep it as general as possible so even you can find some value in this video for yourself. So the very first thing what you have to do is learn your shit. Learn your craft, be good at what you do. There's a few different ways how you can do it. Um, you can go to school, to college, you can do workshops, you can learn from the internet, you can do whatever you want. Me personally, I think if you are in the very beginning of your career, quantity goes over quality. You want to produce as much as you can of your art. For example, me as a cinematographer, filmmaker, whatever, I try to make one film a week. Whether it was a short film, a skit, a, a fake commercial, fake trailer, doesn't matter what you do, just make one a week. That way you're gonna learn your craft very fast. Let's say you do this for one year, like 52 weeks later you made 52 short films and then you are good enough, not the best, but you're good enough to do this what you do for a living. And the reason why I say quantity over quality, like for example, let's say you are a painter or you wanna be a, like a painter. Um, the first drawing ever is not going to be a Mona Lisa. You're not supposed to put like all your work and time into the very first painting. What you are supposed to do is just do a sketch, a stick figure, whatever. You look at it, throw it away, do it again. As opposed to like try to make it as good as possible. You spend hours and weeks and years into your first drawing and you keep erasing, keep painting on top and it's not it's not gonna be good anyways. You're not supposed to sell this thing. It's not supposed to be good. You're supposed to learn from it. That's what I'm saying. Make a little sketch, 10 minutes, look at it, throw it away, start over. Keep doing that. The same way I do with my short films. Each one of my short films, most of them, all of them were, were garbage. They were all trash, but I learned from them. I got, I got better and better and better and then like a, a year later, I was ready to not spend a week on a short film. I was ready to spend maybe two or three weeks on a short film. So the quality got better, but the quantity got less, if that makes sense. I didn't mass produce anymore because my films got better, so I could spend more time on the details. But that's what I did to learn my shit. This is step one. Know what you're doing, be good enough, don't be a master, but then you're ready to make a living. And also a great side effect is if you put so much work into that, people are gonna recognize it. And hard work attracts each other. You're gonna find clients or people you can shoot for automatically. You don't have to go out and apply for jobs. You don't have to do that. If you do the work, people are gonna see it and then you're gonna find your first clients and then you can start charging money for your work. Never have I ever successfully applied for a job and actually got it. Never. Not once in my life. I'm doing that for 10 years. Not once have I applied for a job and I got the job. I got work through exactly this. I was just doing my own work. Every time I don't have any paid work, I just do my own things until somebody sees my work and then he wants to hire me for, for whatever. So that's step one. Be good at what you're doing, know your shit, and then you can start working for money. And if you still don't get hired for work, there's also step two. The problem when you are a struggling artist is that you don't get hired to do your work. Even if you're good enough, you don't get hired, so you have to do other side hustles to make a living. So let's say you are a bartender or a Uber driver or whatever it is you do for a living. Step two is put always more time and effort and work into your art than your side hustles. If you have to work eight hours a day, as an Uber driver, just to make a living, make sure you spend at least the same amount, but preferably more time in your art every day to make sure you can do that as your main job eventually. So you work eight hours a day as an Uber driver, so put eight or more hours into filmmaking or acting or painting or whatever it is you want to do. 
And that means, yes, you're gonna work 16 hours a day. But I never said that was easy. If you can work 16 hours a day to make a living and work on your art, maybe this is not the right thing for you. Art is a very competitive field. So there's always gonna be someone who is more creative or more hardworking or just luckier than you. So you can't allow yourself to work less. So if you really want to become a working artist, make sure that you're capable of working at least 16 hours a day, every day. So step one was know your shit. Step two is work your ass off. So if you still don't get paid work, which is very unlikely at this point you should, but if it still doesn't happen, there's another thing you can do. Depending on the kind of work you do, maybe you have to move to a different place. If you're an actor or something, it would be very helpful if you were living at those places where movies are shot. As a filmmaker or cinematographer, such as myself, of course it could be helpful to live in Los Angeles, but even if you live in like a village with like nobody is there, um, even there you can make a living. My very first job in my career were corporate videos or commercials for gyms, for dentists, for banks, stuff like that. And those exist anywhere. You don't have to live in Los Angeles to do those. So this is a very good way to make some money as a cinematographer or filmmaker, but still as an actor or somebody who has to work for the high paid clients. Because for corporate videos, actors are usually not paid. They just do it to build their reel and stuff like that. So. This is a good beginning, but to actually make some money, you have to go to those places. But if you move to a city like Los Angeles or New York or London, you have to be aware that rent is going to be more expensive and you're going to have to work more and get less for it. So if you're willing to do that, you definitely should. That also means you have to leave family behind, friends behind, maybe a relationship behind. Uh, but you have to decide for yourself if it's worth it for you to give up all that and chase your dream. So those are the three steps so far. First one is know your shit, do the work and learn your art. The second one is work your ass off, work harder than anybody else. The third one is maybe you have to move to a different place to actually do your work. And now the fourth step. It's very, very unlikely that you're still not able to pay your bills with your art if you did those three things very unlikely if you work your ass off you work harder than anybody else you know what you're doing and you live in a place where creators are who need your art who need your skills then it's very unlikely that you don't get work the problem at this point is most people are lazy because they get frustrated they would rather watch netflix all day instead of actually working and again don't waste too much time applying for jobs because that most likely won't go anywhere anyways but I have like one special tip and trick for you, which for some people might sound weird. It's definitely time consuming though. My fourth tip is hyper specialize. Hyper specialization means for me as a filmmaker, for example, um, I could hyper specialize in cinematography, but many people do that. Many people know how to operate a camera or direct somebody to operate a camera, whatever camera it is. But to hyper specialize means going one step further. Me personally, I'm pretty much an all, all rounder. I can direct a film, I can uh, shoot a film, I can edit a film, I can do all those things. So I'm like very spread out. This is pretty much the opposite of hyper specialization. I do everything a little bit. So whatever people have, whatever work people have, I could help out, which is not a bad thing. But people, they don't trust people who do everything. People in the industry, they trust people who do only one thing, but good. For example, you wouldn't go to a dentist who also sells shoes, would you? No, you want to go to a dentist who, who is very good at this one thing, and this is why you trust him. For example, you need a filmmaker who is very good with car commercials. You wouldn't hire somebody who just did a dentist commercial, no. But car commercials are very special. You want somebody who specializes in that. So that's what you need to do. Hyper specialize in your art, in your niche, into a deeper niche and do only that for a while at least. And if it's money you want, I would specialize in something nobody wants to do. Let me think of a stupid example. Um, let's say you're a cinematographer and you hyper specialize in commercials for doorknobs. Everybody wants to shoot music videos or action movies, something cool, you meet cool people, you get high on set, lots of fun, everybody wants to do that. 
That's why it's a very competitive field. What you want to do, what you need to do, just to make the money, you specialize in something nobody wants to do, like doorknob commercials, but then all the doorknob producers in the world are gonna look for commercials at some point, and then they're gonna find, oh, this guy, he makes doorknob commercials. I'm gonna hire him. Not the guy who makes music videos, not, no, I'm gonna hire the guy who specializes in doorknob commercials. It's a stupid example, but you know what I mean. So in your art, you need to hyper-specialize in something you kind of like, or at least you're able to learn. My personal hyper-specialization is effects, visual effects. People in my circle, they know that I do visual effects. They, they see it in my work, they see it in my Instagram story, they see it all the time. And maybe they don't even pay attention, they probably don't even give a fuck. But then at some point, they're gonna be on set and they're gonna overhear, hey, we need some visual effects on that. Then they're gonna think, hey, Phil, he does visual effects, let me give him a call. And I got a job, without doing anything. All I have to do is just be at home, do my visual effects for my own projects, and then at some point I'm gonna get the phone call. Guaranteed. And visual effects is still spread, um, but visual effects is so technical, nobody really wants to learn it. This is why somebody like me who is patient and can learn all that stuff um, has the benefit. This is one of the reasons why I got many jobs and others don't, because they don't hyper-specialize in something. The coolest jobs I ever got, and the most interesting ones, were through my hyper-specialization. Bright, for example, was a Netflix original, one of my first jobs here in the States. I did visual effects for it. Another one, uh, Call of Duty, I did animation for it, and Black Ops 4, and most recently Cold War, I did animation for it. And all of that just because I put in the work into learning how to do visual effects. So something not everybody wants to learn. All right, if you've done all of those four things, there's no way you're gonna be a struggling artist. No way. No fucking way. Learn your shit, learn your craft, learn your art. If you do that, you're like halfway there. Step two, work more than anybody else and work more on your art than you actually have to work for your living. If that doesn't work, step three, move to a place where there's more work for you. And if you're still not there, if you still don't make a living, hyper specialize in something nobody wants to do and then you're gonna make yourself unique and then you're gonna get all the jobs promise so that's it for me if you have anything to add if you're not a struggling artist yourself anymore add it in the comments let's talk with each other let's help each other because in the end it is a competitive field but we're in this together we can help each other out this is why i made this video for you i hope that it was helpful if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and yeah, see you in the next one. Hmm, Teddy. Hyper, hyper spe specialization. It's a f stupid word. <laughs>